Hello students, so in this video we will be discussing about indices. So as you all know, index or indices, they are the most important tool in epidemiology. Okay, they are the most important tool in epidemiology where you can compare your values with standardized preformed values. Okay, it is just to compare. Let's say you are doing a study, you get a specific measurement, you do not know what is a measurement. You have to compare the measurement of your study with pre existing standardized you know measurements that is already existing in literature so that is your index that is one of the most important tools in your epidemiological studies okay so by definition an index it is a numerical value describing the relative status of a population on a graduated scale with definite upper and lower limits which is designed to permit and facilitate comparison with other populations classified by the same criteria and methods so this definition was given by Russell. Okay, it might seem a little bit complex first the definition, but you have to know it is a numerical value. Okay, index is always a numerical value. There is no letters. It is always numbers. Okay, which represent the status of a current population on a graduated scale. Okay, so it is basically first thing it is a number. It represents a population status on a scale with definite upper and lower limits. Okay, it cannot be like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc, etc, it can go to any extent. There is a specific cutoff upper limit and a specific cutoff lower limit. It is only variating in between these upper and lower limit. Okay, it is a numerical value describing the relative status of a population on a graduated scale with definite upper and lower limits, which is designed to permit and facilitate comparison. Why we need this scale to compare with other populations which are described by the same criteria and methods. This is just to make a comparison between two populations. Okay. The ideal requisites of an index, it has clarity, simplicity and objectivity, validity, reliability, quantifiability, sensitivity and sensitivity and acceptability. It can be remembered by the mnemonic CRIVAS. Okay. CRIVAS. So it should be clear, simple. And you should be able to objectively, objectively quantify the measurement. It should be valid for the current study. It should be reliable and you should be able to properly quantify it. It should be sensitive to small changes and it should be acceptable by all, uniformly acceptable. Indices can be classified based upon the direction in which their scores can fluctuate into irreversible and reversible index. Irreversible means it can only go in one direction whereas reversible means it can go in both the direction for example you are measuring the missing tooth or let's say you are measuring the decayed tooth okay decayed tooth can go in one direction in your dmft index decayed missing and filled teeth for example decayed teeth it will go in one direction you can you cannot undecay tooth okay so decay is a permanent damage to a tooth, it can only be restored, so it will go into the filled compartment. So your DMFT index is based on type of a irreversible index, whereas your reversible index is like your gingival bleeding index, wherein gingiva can bleed, you do a simple plaque control measure like scaling and oral hygiene, the bleeding stops and it can go back. So that is a reversible index. Now depending upon the extent to which areas of oral cavity are measured, Indices can be full mouth indices or simplified indices. Full mouth indices wherein you record measurements of all the existing teeth that are present and simplified index wherein only what? You take only specific number of teeth. Okay. You take only a specific number of teeth or a key tooth they are called as to make the measurements. So full mouth indices examples are results per periodontal index. Whereas simplified index example is oral hygiene index simplified by green and vermilion. Indices can also be classified under general categories according to the entity with which they measure. For example, they can measure the disease. For example, the DK component of DMFT index. They can measure the symptom. Your gingival bleeding index, it is due to a symptomatic. The symptom is due to an underlying disease. You can also measure the treatment index. That is a filled component of your DMFT index. 
disease uh, indices can also be classified under special categories like simple and cumulative index simple index can be measuring only one value that is like plaque index by silnas and lu it can also be a cumulative index which measures the multiple values like decay and missing and fill teeth for dental caries cumulative index measure all the evidences of past and present condition indices used for assessing oral hygiene and plaque are oral hygiene index simplified and oral hygiene index plaque index tarski gilmore gilkman modification of quigley in plaque index periodontal disease index oral hygiene index it was developed by green and vermilion in 1960 to classify and assess your oral hygiene status it was developed to study variation in gingival inflammation in relation to the degree of mental retardation in children that was the original study it is sensitive simple and rapid method for assessing group or individual oral hygiene quantitatively as the oral hygiene index was time consuming this was a full mouth index okay as it was time consuming the same guys green and vermilion a four years later they developed a much more easier and simplified oral hygiene index simplified wherein you measure only certain index teeth that is your 6 1 and 6 6 1 and 6 okay these are your index teeth for this simplified index it is a partial index it has two components a debris index and a calculus index you calculate both the debris and calculus index separately and then you combine it cumulatively to form the oral hygiene index simplified the selection of surfaces to be scored are the labial surfaces of incisors buccal surface of upper molar and lingual surface of lower molar the in instruments used are mouth mirror and number 23 shepherd's hook explorer okay so what do you do we have certain index teeth like this your incisors you measure labial side your molars upper molar means you measure labial side and lower molar you mean you measure your lingual side okay that is how you measure indices used for the measurement of gingival bleeding a circular bleeding index papillary bleeding index gingival bleeding index by barnes and creter 1974 again another gingival bleeding index by hooka inamo and bay in 1975 modified circular bleeding index eastman interdental bleeding index indices used for the assessment of gingival inflammation are papillary marginal attachment index papillary marginal index and gingival index or modified gingival index okay there are various indices for each parameter indices that are used for the assessment of gingival and periodontal disease are pma index that is papillary marginal attachment index simple gingival index russell's periodontal index very important periodontal disease index cpit index they measure the status and also give the treatment needs we have community periodontal index as well okay frequently asked question one thing what you have to know you have to know what are the types of indices for example they can give you dmft index and they can give you the option is it a cumulative index is it a simple index you also need to know what is a reversible index and what is irreversible okay mostly many of the periodontal index they are mainly reversible and the caries index i'm not telling everything majorly periodontal index are mainly reversible and what index used to measure caries are generally irreversible okay so uh, given a question given a particular index you have to classify okay then they can ask you the index teeth for your oral hygiene index simplified that is your 161126363146 they can ask you the surfaces wherein incisors you measure the labial side and molars if it is upper you measure the labial or buccal and if it is lower you measure the lingual side okay